All right. Great. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming today. Um, welcome to uh, Talent Matches webinar in, a, so in collaboration with the Canadian Museums Association on the Young Canada Works Program. Um, before I introduce everyone, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples on whose lands each of our speakers is working from today. Um, and we invite you to introduce yourself and acknowledge the land you are on in the chat. Our speakers are in various parts of the country, including in Vancouver, on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. And the Canadian Museums Association acknowledges that its secretariat is located on the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabewaki peoples. My name is Debbie Reese, and I'm Talent Matches Project Manager. And I'd like to introduce you to today's speaker, Louise Petrie. Louise has worked with the Canadian Museums Association as a program officer for Young Canada Works Building Careers and Heritage for two and a half years, and she's originally from BC. Also joining us today to help with technical support is Alana Hebert, who has recently joined the Talent Match program as our career coach. And there are also two ASL interpreters joining us today, Carmen and Jamie. Uh, just so you all know, we are recording the webinar, so you can rewatch it later, or you can share it with your colleagues. I will also share the slides so you don't have to take extensive notes. And if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please add them to the chat. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll go through as many of them as we can. But before I hand things over to Louise, I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about the Talent Match program. So I'll just share my screen with you. And I'll just make this full screen. Great. So for those who may not know, uh, MATCH stands for Museums, Arts, Tourism, Culture, and Hospitality. And the Talent MATCH program is a collaboration between the BC Museums Association, the BC Alliance for Arts and Culture, Go to HR, which is the BC Tourism and Hospitality Industries Human Resources Association, as well as ACE Will, the Association for Cooperative Education and Work Integrated Learning, BC Yukon. The program is funded by the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training. Talent Match's goal is to help museums, arts, tourism, culture, and hospitality organizations access student talent through co ops and other work integrated learning placements so that those students can in turn help those organizations recover and renew. The program provides employers with resources to make hiring a student easier. And this includes information on funding, such as today's info session, uh, help connecting to post-secondary institutions with programs that are relevant to the positions or projects employers want students to help with, and tips on how to recruit and onboard students into your organization. In addition to resources, Talent Match provides one-on-one -on -one support, so you can email me to arrange a time to talk about your organizational needs, and you can see both my email address and the Talent Match URL in the slide right now. I can help you brainstorm for the project or position and find information that's most helpful to you in bringing on a student. I'd like to share a couple of resources with you briefly as well. Firstly is our simplified GLAM recruitment guide. And so GLAM stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And this lists programs that are most relevant to the GLAM sector, which includes museum studies, library and information technology, as well as schools that have anthropology, indigenous studies, and other relevant programs you can recruit from. It's a little thin on programs specifically related to galleries, but I hope to update it in the coming months. And the image of the document is in the slide right now, and you can access this guide on the Talent Match webpage. There's also a similar guide for the hospitality and tourism sector. And I've begun building one for the fine and performing arts as well, and I intend to create one that covers more administrative related programs. In the meantime, however, please feel free to reach out as I'm happy to research programs for you. Or you can have a look at the programs that are listed on the ACE Will website. 
When you're ready to start recruiting, we've created a general recruitment guide, and this includes tips on what to include in a job posting, sample interview questions, and another tip sheet on how to hire students who can take initiative, as well as many other resources. An easy way for you to recruit from multiple schools at once is to use ACEWILS Post and Opportunity Portal. Uh, this is not a job board, but once you fill in the form, it sends your posting to the schools you select, and then staff at that institution will post your job. The form is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but the most important part is selecting the schools because it will only be sent to the schools you choose. Some schools will post your positions for recent graduates through this form as well. Uh, but if you're recruiting for a recent grad, I recommend that you use other job boards in, in addition. Uh, for instance, the BC Museums Association has a job board that could be helpful to recruit emerging museum professionals. Just one sec. <laughs> I also want to give you a brief overview of the Young Canada Works streams and where you can find more information. There are four streams, two of which are meant to support hiring students for a six to 16 week period and who are returning to school, and two that are meant to hire recent graduates for a four to 12 month period. The two for students include Young Canada Works in Heritage Organizations, which is aimed at organizations in the heritage sector, including museums, art galleries, heritage sites and libraries, as well as other organizations, which you can see listed in the slide. The other is Young Canada Works in both official languages, which is meant for organizations that operate in both English and French and are willing to hire students from other parts of the country. The two streams that are meant for recent post-secondary school graduates includes the Young Canada Works at Building Careers in English and French, this one is again meant for organizations operating in both English and French, as well as official language minority community media, such as French, a French newspaper operating in BC. The other is the Young Canada Works at Building Careers and Heritage Program. Again, this is primarily meant for heritage focused organizations. However, arts administration and arts practice organizations are also eligible. While everyone applies through the same online grant portal, uh, how your application is assessed is dependent on which delivery partner you fall under. And this is determined by the type of organization you are. Uh, you can find information on delivery partners as well as eligibility for the employee candidates for all programs at the Young Canada Works website. And I'll let Louise tell you more about what the Canadian Museums Association as a delivery partner looks for in applications the program overall, what positions they can fund, and how to apply. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Louise. I'll stop my slide share so she can start hers. Hello. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. I will share my screen in just a moment. There we are. Can everyone see the presentation? It looks we'll good. Is it, is it good? Yeah, it looks good. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so thank you for the introduction. And uh, that was a very good summary of the Young Canada Works program. Um, so I'll try to go into a little bit more detail about what an application should look like. Um, so as Debbie mentioned, my name is Louise and I work with the Young Canada Works Building Careers and Heritage stream at the Canadian uh, Museums Association and I'm also the um, communications liaison for YCW with the CMA. And I've been there for uh, a few intake periods, so um, I'm looking forward to telling you um, some more about how to submit a high scoring application that has the potential to be funded. So our goal today is to provide you with an overview of the application process and also to provide you with information on how to create a high quality YCW funding application for both building careers and heritage, as well as the heritage organization stream. 
Our goal is to ensure that all eligible employers are aware of the benefits of the program, both financial and other benefits, as well as to understand the application process you'll have to go through. Um, our application deadline for this year um, for both streams is going to be January 21st, 2022. Um, this is an earlier deadline than in previous years. And for the first time in a while, um, both streams, HO and BCH, are due on the same day. So as a quick overview on how um, applications are reviewed, we, the YCW team at the CMA, create a peer review committee of heritage professionals to review all of our applications. The peer reviewers uh, read the applications and score them according to set criteria. The success of an application is largely based on the scores given to it by the peer reviewers. Um, the YCW team at the CMA also reviews applications to make sure that the positions and the organizations meet relevant criteria. And I will go into some more detail on that later in the presentation. So an introduction to the Canadian Museums Association. Uh, we are a delivery organization for Young Canada Works um, for heritage sector programs. The other delivery organizations for Young Canada Works in heritage are the Canadian Council of Archives, Cultural Human Resources Council, and the National Trust for Canada. And I'm sure you are all fairly familiar with the Canadian Museums Association, but I will give a quick overview. So the CMA started in 1947. We are an organization that provides a voice for the museum community, um, broadly speaking, in Canada. We have organizational members from small volunteer-run organizations up to larger museums with um, staffs of dozens. And we also have individual members, um, as well as a special student membership. We advocate for public policies, such as calling for updates to the National Museums Policy, financial and other support for the museum sector. We encourage updates to legislation, and we build skills across the profession through resources, events, and awards. So one of the objectives at the CMA is to strengthen the museum workforce. And we do this partly through delivering um, conferences, our annual conference, for instance, events, our reward program, and of course, delivering Young Canada Works. We have been working with um, the Department of Canadian Heritage to administer YCW since the program started in the 1990s. Our funded organizations range from organizations with multi-million dollar operating budgets to much smaller um, organizations, indigenous cultural centers, university departments, and science centers, just to name a few. We um, prioritize those that operate in a language minority environment, so French in a largely Anglophone environment, um, a cultural organization in Millardville in, in Coquitlam would be an example, of that or English in a Francophone environment. Our target heritage sector employees must be nonprofit museums or related organizations with heritage mandates, projects or objectives operating in Canada and occasionally internationally. We have two international internships annually, um, but they are funded through a Canadian organization. Um, we haven't had them, of course, because of COVID for the last couple of years, uh, but we're hoping to start that up and they are available for this year through us. Next slide. So just a quick overview of YCW. So we um, at the CMA, we administer YCW on behalf of Canadian Heritage, um, but YCW is also part of the Government of Canada's Youth Employment and Skills Strategy which funds work experiences in museums and cultural heritage organizations. YCW is an important investment in the future of Canada's museums and the cultural sector in general, creating professional development opportunities for young Canadians. So we have two streams, as Debbie went through, the Young Canada Works and Heritage Organizations, which funds short-term four to 16 week job placements for students. So they must be in full-time um, studies before the work term, 
and then intend to return to school after the placement is over. And then the other stream is the Young Canada Works at Building Careers and Heritage, which funds longer opportunities. So they're between four months and 12 months. Um, and these are for college or university graduates. So I would like to mention here, if you have all had experiences previously, you might remember that it used to be a recent graduate, but it is now that that criteria no longer exists. It used to be within 24 months of graduation, but now it can be anytime as long as you are 30 years old or younger. Um, so some quick stats, which you can see there. So for 2020, 2021, which was the year of COVID. So there was um, a little bit of extra funding provided for the heritage sector from the government. Young Canada Works HO funded over 1,000 positions and provided just over 6 million in funding. And the Building Careers and Heritage um, program created 228 internships and funded 3.8 million to heritage organizations. Um, so I have lots of examples of successful internships and HO students in BCH, which is my program. We, we get um, narrative reports from our interns and employers at the end of their, their time um, in the internship. And they're always full of great experiences and employers saying that they couldn't imagine getting whatever project it was done without the help of this intern. Um, and we always have success stories where the former intern or HO student gets either hired on at the place where they did the internship or the, the job, um, or they're hired on elsewhere. And then later they become our um, our contact or a supervisor for another HO student or BCH intern. And we love hearing these sorts of stories. So if you do have any past great experiences with uh, YCW student or intern through the CMA, um, please feel free to email us at that email, ycw at museums.ca. Um, and we would love to hear it or please share them on social media and be sure to tag the CMA. So I'll just try to give a quick, as quick as possible, um, intro to how the application works. Um, so between the two programs, Building Careers and Heritage and the Heritage Organizations program, there are a lot of overlaps. So they will look the same um, in many ways, but there are different expectations for each of the streams. Um, and just to, just for the administrative part of it, um, for starting your application, if you go to the YCW uh, website, if you do not already have a YCW profile, you just create one um, and you'll get taken to where you can submit a job funding application. If uh, you do have one already and you've, you've been with us previously, um, when you go to your profile, you go, make sure you go to the 2022-2023 year. Um, you'll see a button that says uh, create a new job funding application. Once you select that, you get to select the stream as well as the delivery organization. So hopefully through the Canadian Museums Association, um, and then you get to fill up the rest of the application. So more specifics. Um, so ensure that the job that you're creating and the tasks involved will appeal to an emerging professional in the heritage sector. So when creating a position for a student or an intern, consider the person who will be filling the role. So the tasks and skills required should be geared to someone who is in the early stages of their career, not someone with mid-level or higher experience. So for instance, no supervisory roles or management and no director positions. Um, so you can anticipate that someone applying for a BCH internship uh, for instance, will have had some relevant experience in education. They're possibly, um, they've possibly completed a degree in museum studies or art history, although having those degrees is usually not necessary for most of the positions. Um, and they've likely had some experience working or volunteering with a heritage organization. So the role that you design for them should um, match their skill level, but also be intended to build more skills for the profession. Um, whereas heritage organizations applicants are usually in the midst of their first degree, um, but they can also be in high school or um, they can also be working on a second degree. 
Um, so the roles designed for that stream should develop basic skills um, and provide some experience with um, skills needed to work in a heritage organization and also sort of get a sense of what it's like and how a heritage organization operates. Um, so when you're creating your application and you're describing the position, and this also works on the job poster, but that's a separate issue where you also have to summarize what the role will be. Um, you want to highlight what makes you and the project as well as the organization stand out. So the YCW program is fairly competitive. Um, so you definitely want to make yourself stand out. Um, you ask yourself, what makes this opportunity unique? How is it going to benefit my organization as well as the potential employee? Why is my project important and why should it be funded? Be specific about benefits to your organization, the community, the intern or student. Um, and that, again, I, I will probably mention this later, um, but that is a comment that we get a lot from our peer reviewers. It will often say vague. That is <laughs> that's generally not a good sign if it's vague and lacks specifics. So you want to be specific with everything throughout your application. Um, so be specific about the benefits. Tell us about the background of the project. Don't just say that it involves accessioning or creating an exhibit or cataloging. Um, tell us more. Uh, will the intern have an opportunity to develop their own exhibit? Um, will the student's work be valued? And will it, how will it impact the organization? Provide specifics on why this project will be valuable. Um, projects for building careers and heritage positions should involve the intern developing their own projects and they should be given a little bit of autonomy um, and, you know, a little bit of room for creativity. Projects for heritage organizations should help develop their basic skills um, and these skills should be specific to the heritage sector. So stay away from a cashier type job or something that isn't specifically beneficial in heritage. So the budget is probably one of the more difficult and also least enjoyable portions of the application. And if you need any assistance with this, please feel free to contact um, me or you know, the YCW team in general at ycw at museums.ca. Um, so you wanna take some time and look at the whole budget section um, to understand <laughs> how it all works together. So this is where you will break down what the organization is going to contribute financially and also through in-kind costs. So this takes account of the time that you're going to put into helping the intern and developing them. Um, so time for supervision, for instance, and debriefing, um, et cetera. Um, but it can, get, it can get complicated. If you have any questions on it, um, please feel free to contact us. It's also not, um, you know, we won't reject someone's application because of a budget issue, but it, it's, it does show that you know, put thought into their supervision, for instance, and um, their professional development um, and other things you're going to be doing besides just their wage. So for wages, um, for the year coming up, 2022-2023, YCW can fund up to 75% of wages plus mandatory employer costs. So things like um, pension, uh, vacation pay, et cetera. Uh, so that's the only thing that YCW can contribute to. Um, and we, we contribute to cash only to wages and mandatory employer costs. So the other line items are all um, either things that, that the organization will contribute to so the rest of the wages, um, but also in-kind contributions like supervision and orientation costs or um, you know if they need special equipment etc and also um, my other main point under this would be to keep your wage high um, because it attracts applicants and uh, we've had lots of positions um, you know not be filled and I, I think the wage contributed to that and um, so we've recently published a, a wage guide that is available on our uh, CMA website that gives a sense of what the wage should be in your region and for the type of a uh, type of role that you are um, posting. Um, yeah, 
So another thing to consider there too is uh, the in-kind costs. You should always factor in um, helping them after the internship as well. So, um, you know, providing references and providing networking opportunities so that they can move on to their next their next job. So it's always the, the sense you have to keep in mind is this is to help you, but it's also to help the intern slash student find a, a good position afterwards and, and build them up. Um, so this is on the goals of YCW. So keep in mind um, the goals of the YCW pro program when you're creating your position. So in your application, make it clear that the job aligns with the, at least one of our program goals. So the three goals are improve knowledge, skills, and practice in the heritage field, um, preserve heritage for current and future generations, and help public access, help the public access, access Canadian heritage. Um, and this one, measuring outcomes is key. So you wanna outline in this section, um, how you will measure the success of this position. Um, so for instance, if it's a digital or a communications position, you might, your goal might be to increase your um, visits to the website by 15% or increase your um, social media interactions by 30%. Um, but really it can be any sort of measurable outcome and you wanna be again, specific. Um, so a measurable outcome, um, should have three parts. So you will have an ideal goal, how you will measure the progress, and then what your definition of success will be. Um, so you can measure your progress with tools like a visitor survey, um, like how many records have been processed or cataloged, etc. And then another key part um, is building a comprehensive timeline. So you want to set out a um, a timeline for or a work plan for the internship or um, student position. So make sure that you set out project milestones. Um, you don't just say like three months, we will be photographing, um, photographing or um, digitizing newspapers. Uh, you want to say, you, know, you want to be again specific and say, we want to get this many things done in this time. And then you know, also, again, be specific about what this is for, um, set up milestones and show how you'll be tracking the, the progression. And you can even include here, um, you know, any training that goes on, um, meetings, um, the end goal, et cetera. So just make a very detailed timeline of what your plan is for the internship. Um, and, so supervision is also very important. So if this is detailed, this will show that you have thought out um, how you will be a good mentor to your intern or student. Um, so again, be specific in your supervision plan. YCW students and interns require a dedicated mentorship and supervision plan in order to develop their professional skills. So tell us who will be responsible um, for supervising and what the process will be. So how many meetings will you be having? Um, is there going to be someone else in the department or in the, the organization that is also going to be training them? Um, or are they working with anyone else as well? So yeah, just let us, let us know how you're gonna be mentoring because it's a key part of the whole, the whole process. And again, um, prioritize professional development. So in the same vein, um, tell us how you will be helping the employee in their professional development. So the YCW program is designed to help young people develop skills and experience um, that they need to join the heritage field as professionals. So we want to know how your project will give them the tools that they require to become a museum professional. And again, be specific. Um, and this uh, comes up not only in your application, but also in your job poster. And I recently added a job poster tutorial to our website. So please feel free to have a look at that. And then we go into a little bit more detail as well on the job equity statement. Um, so we have a special part of the application 
on um, a job equity strategy. So be sure to include uh, your job, your organization's job equity statement in both the job poster as well as in your application. Um, it's a federal program, so we take job equity very seriously. And this helps show students or interns that they are all welcome to apply. So again, this increases the chances of having your position filled. Um, and it can be simple. It can just be a sentence. We are an equal opportunity employer and encourage applications from all qualified candidates. You can make it as detailed as you want, though. Um, and also another key is including in the recruitment section of the application how you're going to ensure that uh, you reach all of the eligible candidates mentioned in the job equity statement. So where are you going to be promoting the position? Um, and in addition, so we also offer funding. So if somebody is facing a barrier, if there's a disability, an issue with accessibility, um, there is additional funding available for that. So just, uh, just let us know and we will let you know if it's eligible. And this one is quite simple. Um, just be sure to save your application elsewhere from the uh, YCW website because the YCW website will, um, it will kick you out regularly. So if you save it in a Word document and then copy and paste it in, that will save you time. And you can also go over it easier and um, make sure you update it and do a draft um, because it, it logs people out, uh, unfortunately, quite frequently. Um, and then just another point, some people do not click submit. Um, they think it's submitted, but make sure at the very end, not only click save, but submit. Um, so additional resources and contacts. You can always contact uh, me. So my email is lpitre, P-I-T-R-E, at museums.ca. Um, and that's the BCH program. Um, but if you if you email ycw at museums.ca, we will we will forward it to whoever is best able to help you. Um, also, please go to the uh, the Young Canada Works section of the CMA website, museums.ca, and we have a lot of info there. We're posting more and more, so we have lots of tutorials, and we're trying to add more. Um, I believe we have a tutorial currently on the actual process of on the website of doing your application um we have other resources like the wage guide as well which is very very helpful i think for knowing what a competitive wage is for uh your region and that is the end and um i have we have time for questions i think and also um i can do a quick overview before we go into questions if you'd like just so it's all clear before um, so yeah, just to go over the, the key points. Um, so these jobs are meant for people who are pretty new to the sector. So don't set the bar too high to, or, uh, and be sure to, to, to make the position relevant to heritage. Um, that is, that is one of the main, main, main points that you want to develop specific skills that are specific to heritage or culture. Um, and the recurring issue that we see is a lack of detail in applications. So give yourself enough time to look into everything and be as full of information and full of specifics as possible. Um, yeah, we want we love to get paragraphs, not um, you know, not a three-word answer to to any of the sections. Um, and just to go over the general gist of um the tips we just went through so those are appeal to emerging professionals highlight what makes you as in your project as well as your organization stand out um understand the the budget and how it works and if you have any questions please contact us because it's it's not the easiest part and make sure that the job aligns with ycw program goals provide um examples of how you will measure the success of the project. I have a detailed comprehensive timeline, also have a detailed supervision plan, prioritize professional development for the intern or student, um, explain your job equity strategy, and be sure to save your um, 
your application apart from the YCW website so you don't lose it. And yeah, that is all that I have for this presentation, but I would love to take some questions and thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to that. Great. Stop Thanks sharing my screen. There yes, we go. Uh, for everyone, if you do have questions, please put them in the chat and I will go through them as many of them as we can. We have time. I think we'll get through them all. <laughs> So the first question I had was from Nicole saying, just wondering about returning students. I am at an art gallery that does not have a permanent collection or archive and do we qualify? Yes, um, you should. Uh, we do have some organizations who don't have a permanent collection. Um, the only key issue is, is the mandate must be heritage and, and that you're accessible to the public. So as long as you meet that requirement, was that what did she say? It's an art gallery. Yes, she says if the I'm at an art gallery that does not have a permanent collection. That that would qualify. Yes. Okay. Great. And was that also a question about returning students, though? Uh, yes. So just wondering about returning students. So um, I'm. I'm guessing that's like if you had them hired before, maybe in a different position. Um, or, or for HO, um, if it's about H, HO. So we, the only requirement we can make is that they have an intention to return. So if they don't end up returning, we can't, um, you know, we, there's nothing that we can do with that. And that does happen sometimes where honestly they, they go from an HO position directly into a BCH position. Um, so yeah, we're not, we don't, right. we can't really follow up on that anyways, but also uh, if it is about returning, so for HO, you can do the program as many times as, as you want. Um, so you can come back to the same organization year after year. And I don't think I mentioned this in the presentation, um, but we're also, um, the HO positions you can now do anytime. It used to be a summer program, but it's now whenever whenever you want it to start and whenever the person is available. Um, but I don't know if that answered the question on returning students. Uh, well, if Nicole wants to add a bit more to the chat, we can get back to that. Um, maybe let's imagine if it's um, you hired a student for co-op or something, either through uh, Young Canada Works funding or other funding or no funding, and then you want to bring that person back after they've completed school for an internship um, um that person qualify so for ho it's a, it's different the that would be fine for ho for bch we we focus more on on open recruitment and giving um experiences that are new so we prefer them not to have been associated with the organization previously but it does certainly happen um Typically, we would ask for proof of open recruitment if someone did hire somebody that they had had as a student or an employee previously for BCH, um, because it, the point of the program is to give experience to as many people as possible. So, it's um, but it does happen for sure. Okay. It's not def it's not out of the realm of possibility. All right. <laughs> Great. So uh, Nicola asks, can the BCH po positions start in May or is it better to start in September? Uh, is there any difference in chances to receive funding? They, it's really difficult and it, it's difficult to pinpoint because we, we have core funding that is guaranteed and the core funding is only, will only cover 12 internships. This is for, for BCH. Um, so it will cover 12 in total. And then we have to wait for additional funding to be approved by the government. So it comes out in the budget and then it has to be, has to go through everything. Um, so the ones that start in May would have to be the ones that were accepted from core funding. So that, and that again was when our, our application deadline was in March. We made it a little bit earlier. So the original ones can start earlier. Um, so if you are one of the 12 best applications, then yes, you can definitely start in May. Um, 
but it does it, a lot of them don't start until fall because of the later um, announcement of funding, unfortunately. But they also start all the, the thing is they they start whenever it, it's based on when they can find someone, but also when they want the project to start. If if there's a time sensitivity to it, if it's like for a specific festival or so it's entirely up to the organization and the person making the application, but also, of course, it depends on finding a candidate. So okay. sometimes they, we just have to cancel a couple that did not find candidates. Okay, uh, Chelsea asks, can you tell us what else is required for the job equity strategy apart from the job equity statement? Yes, so um, essentially, I mean, in terms of the application, it would be um, the part about where you're going to look. Are you going to make an effort to, to post the position in places where people, everyone can see it? Uh, some people will just post it on their own social media. Um, but, you know, ad, um, advertising it, you know, in Indigenous communities or other communities and more broadly is, is will be part of that strategy. So making sure that it, it isn't an inside, an inside posting. It has to be um, broadcast. So letting us know that you have a strategy to attract people from very diverse, um, diverse backgrounds, diverse identities, essentially. Okay. The indigenous one is probably the, the easier one um, to to answer on, but okay. And making sure also that you are aware of the disability benefit that we have, because I think a lot of people aren't aware of it um, and, you know, might just be like, no, we can't accommodate that because we don't have the money. But we um, do, we do want to emphasize that there is funding available if you, if you find a candidate that is, you know, doesn't have full, <laughs> full, if they're not able to do certain things if they need accessibility help. Right. Okay, great. <clears throat> and I see that Nicole says that the that her question before was answered. So that's great. Oh. Um, I had a couple random questions that I thought of during the presentation as we wait for a couple more people to add questions oh, to the chat. Um, <laughs> um, it, so you mentioned for the, the internship program, um, that the eligibility of the candidate is a little bit different. Um, is there any exception for if an employee is older than 30, but is a recent graduate? <laughs> no, I wish there were. Uh, we get that question so often, which is why I grimace, because um, that is a very, it's a very good question um, that I have to say no to, unfortunately. Although I did just notice there is an organization that has been lobbying um, the federal government to increase it. I believe it's the um, Conservators Association of Canada. Um, and I was, I was really intrigued by that. And we, we have raised it as an issue um, that, you know, we have a lot of people who have candidates that are 39, um, but are not eligible for these, these people, or even 31 and, and can't do it, which is um, unfortunate. Because um, as we know, there's a lot of people doing later mid-career sort of shifts and um, you know a lot of people do education later in their life now not just when they're 22 so yeah. but no okay. no we can't that's one rule we can't break <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks um are there maximum dollar amounts or is it just up to 75 percent of uh oh, covered good question i'm so sorry um there are and for this year, I don't remember what they are at the top of my head. Is it varies? I don't even know if Heritage has, has, has revealed what the top amount is this, this year. I mean, it, it also varies um, based on if it's a conservation science. Those tend to get more. We don't have funding for a lot of conservation science um, internships that would be through BCH but those tend to, because they're very specific skills, so they tend to get paid a little bit more. Um, this year it is 14,000. Um, it has been 10,000 and um, during COVID it was 20,000. Okay. So it varies quite a bit. Um, but, I, but let me find out, I'll find out if we know the, 
the top that's for BCH, sorry, I should specify. Um, yeah, I'll double check on that. I can, I can, I don't know if we're keeping email addresses or have a contact list, but it's definitely, it would be on the Young Canada Works website when they, when they get that info. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see, Chelsea says, can you tell us more about the disability benefit? Does it only cover physical disabilities or accessibility challenges? Does it cover candidates struggling with mental health or who are neurodivergent? It does, yes. It would be on a case by case basis, but yes, it covers, um, it covers it's very all encompassing. Um, and it also covers people who are facing um, other barriers. So if you're a single, single parent and then child care issues. Um, it's yeah, it's a it's a very flexible benefit. So we would just need to know the specifics and uh, we we would make a determination. But yeah, it, it would definitely involve uh, mental health issues and um, all variety of any any accessibility issues. Okay, including travel, we actually fund we fund travel as well. So if you wanted to work in New Brunswick and you're in Calgary, um, we will help you get from Calgary to New Brunswick or vice right. versa. Great. Um, so Kira asks, specific to the HO budgets, are we supposed to exclude stat holidays paid but not worked from the total days worked and show um, those as part of Merck's costs instead? That is an excellent question. Um, that, that won't be like, it won't be a key issue in the budget, but yes, stat holidays are included under wages um, when we do the final payroll. So stat holidays would be included as a day worked because it included as part of the wages. Okay, great. Uh, Fiona asks, does the length of the internship come into the criteria for the Young Canada Works summer intern stream? Would it be preferable to apply for one longer internship versus two shorter internships? Oh, good question. Um, that's, I've never, I've never had that question posed. We often get people who ask for two positions, the same, like two of the same position. I don't know if she means two of the same position. And usually, you know, we'd be, we'd ask them, why do you need two people? Like, do you need two people or is it like, um, so not, I don't think there is an easy answer to that. I think it would depend on what the position was, but there's no, you can definitely apply for more than one candidate. You can apply for, you know, I mean, one person applied for 10. Um, they did not get 10, but um, you can have, you know, four, four, for instance, is fairly not uncommon. Uh, but I don't think there's really um, a firm answer on, what would be better? Um, we do prefer them to not be part time if that helps at all. Um, so full time positions get uh, marked higher; they're more likely to be funded. Um, but the length of the actual internship doesn't really um, won't affect whether or not you're funded. Your chances of getting funded. Okay. Um, one question I had while you were uh, talking about the positions, uh, can the jobs you're looking for get funded combined tasks? For example, if they are cashiering or selling tickets, but also working on archiving or developing. Yes, yeah, that would be fine as long as it involves, uh, as long as the cashiering part of it isn't like, isn't a large percentage, as long as they're developing skills, because I mean, you know, in the museum world, you do have to work in the gift shop and other jobs so um yeah you can definitely do some but it's just that that couldn't be the whole job so if it's you know a third of it that would be fine <laughs> i'm just um, guessing at the third but yeah that that okay. would be fine great uh do previous years projects or hires influence future applications um uh, what did, I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, like if you were funded for a project last year, but uh, it didn't work out very well for whatever reason, would that oh. affect a future application? Oh, so as your as an employer, um, no, no, we we usually so if say if you had if you had an application that was not funded one year because say it was, I mean it also varies from year to year. So we might get 
uh, a bunch of very good applications. So it might be a year where yours was good. It just wasn't, you know, as good. Um, and but it's not going to. It won't affect at all if you if you submit a bad application. No, I shouldn't say a bad application, but if you submit a, an application that's not funded and then apply again the next year, we won't uh, you know, keep track and, and yeah, that is fine. Um, I mean, if there was an actual issue with your internship, um, if there was, I guess, supervision issue, if the intern um, had a bad experience, we might, I don't know if we would would not fund you, but we would definitely be have a monitoring. Um, we do monitoring, so making sure that the supervision is good um, has been improved from previous experiences. But that's really the only the only uh, result of having a bad experience. Okay, as, as an employer. All right, that's helpful. And um, how much time do you recommend setting aside to prepare an application? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, it depends if it's a project that you already have in mind and it's one that's been percolating in your mind for some time. Um, I mean, the actual filling out of the application, I would say if you're starting from scratch and you've never made an application, like four hours, three or four hours. Um, and if it's one that you have done before, um, you can certainly reuse parts of your past applications. Um, but in total, I mean, I think the budget trips some people up and if I had to do the budget, I'm sure that would take me an hour all by itself. Um, but it, it depends. I, I would definitely give it an afternoon if I was, if I was going to be submitting. Um, it's, yeah, it's not like a 15 minute survey. Right. It's, it's in the realm of hours. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, I know that, um, you know, uh, in my previous role, I used to work for the Vancouver Fringe Festival. Um, we didn't apply through uh, the Canadian Museums Association. We applied through the CHRC for the Young Canada Works, but it was definitely, you know, talking with my teammates about what everyone was kind of looking for in the position and how the timeline of the organization and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, you often have to put, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of, of like moving parts in museums. So you want to make sure that everything is timed. And yeah, you've definitely consulted with departments in your museum or organization. Okay, great. And uh, my last question, although if someone else wants to uh, put, uh, oh, I see someone <laughs> saying that it took a, it took them at least a whole day to put together an application. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone else has any other questions, please pop them in there. Um, my last question was if the intern or the student can work remotely or if they have to be on site. They do not have to be on site. It is entirely up to, to you um, and them, I suppose. Um, I mean, in some cases, people were not interns slash students were not comfortable because of COVID being on site. Um, so there were a few cases where that had to be accommodated, but um, I mean, it you can definitely do remote work um, or work from home. Um, it's entirely up to to you as the, the person submitting the application and, and hiring the person to do the role. So it, yeah, not, not a YCW rule at all. Okay, great. Well, I don't see any other questions in the chat and I see the time is coming to an end. <laughs> so thank you so much, Louise, for taking the time out and telling us more today. Um, I'm going to quickly, um, if you want to do this as well, throw in some uh, useful email addresses or web pages into the chat so people can have a look for more details. I can do that with um, the talent match website, which has a lot of resources um, for hiring, including that GLAM resource guide. Um, it should, might be a helpful way to recruit some students or some recent graduates if you want to reach out to those schools. That's that there. And then I'll put my email address in there as well. There we go. And I see, Louise, you've entered your email address there, too. All right. So uh, thank you so much, everybody. Sorry, Louise, did you want to say something? <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, please feel free to contact me any time.
I enjoy I enjoy people's questions and it's nice to hear from people who are interested in applying. So I hope you guys will all apply. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks and thank you, Debbie. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. And thanks everyone for coming out today. Um, and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye.